All right, welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to take a um, complex roof from Archicad um, and get it ready for a laser cutter. So there's a bit of a process to it. Um, I'm going to show you a way that I've found that works. Otherwise, you could potentially make cameras that are sort of parallel to each surface. Um, but I think this process is easier um, if you've got the software available. So first things first, uh, we've just clean up our model. So I know that my roof is on the third floor. So I'm going to delete all of the stories apart from the third floor. Oops. There we go. Right click, delete this story. And I'm just cleaning up this, so I'm get rid of my section views as well. Not that I probably need to um, for just the, this process, but nice to have a cleaner workflow anyway. So I go back to my 3D view, just hopefully I've got my roof. And if I um, use the shift button and scroll wheel down, I can see that it's still a, a 3D object, which is good. Okay, so the process that I'm going to do first, um, I need to save it um, and I'm going to export into 3ds Max. So I need to go to File, Save As, and from the drop down menu I need to select 3D Studio Max, uh, and I'm going to call it Roof. Now there's some options that we need to configure. Um, so we need to make sure it's set to surfaces, uh, the other types don't work. Um, Autodesk doesn't work that friendly with ArchiCAD. Um, and it doesn't really understand layers and whatnot. So we click the surfaces and we change the drawing units to being 1000. Um, again, this is just a little bit from trial and error. You just have to trust me on this um, because this will um, allow us to export really well to Illustrator at the end if we set this to 1000. So we'll press OK and this will save our file in our folder. So I'm just going to go over to my folder, find the roof, and I'm going to right click, open with, and 3ds Max. Now this might take a moment to load, um, and that's okay. So basically the idea is that, um, as I said, we're, we're taking a, a complex shape, which is actually a series of polygons, and we're going to sort of dumb it down a little bit, and then 3ds Max will um, do a process called UV Unwrap, which will allow us to flatten it, which will then allow us to get a, a look at each view from above, which we can then obviously um, laser cut. So I'm not going to explain how to use 3ds Max completely. It's um, a whole different beast, so I'll just go through sort of what we need to. Um, so when you're importing, we need to untick convert units. Um, 3ds Max has a tendency to just kind of create random junk units, so let's keep command of what we know. So um, we'll also do completely replace. Just good practice if you're bringing something new in, uh, that way you know for sure it's going to be completely clean. Um, so when we bring an object in, by default we get this light and we get a camera. So if I just select the light and press the delete button, and again select the camera and press the delete button, and believe it or not there is actually a small object in here. So if I just left click and drag, um, I've selected something which you can see over here. If I press the Z button, uh, it will zoom to my view hopefully. Great, there we go. So I can now use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if I hold down the Alt button and push the scroll wheel in, I can uh, zoom around my view. And you can see it's actually come in um, you know, with the same basic material and all of the different polygons that I had before. So that's a good start. We've got it in 3ds Max. Um, yeah, so we don't want to sort of maximize this viewport because it's sort of handy having it over here at this stage. And we're going to work with this right side of the menu for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is just select the roof, so just have these white brackets to say that it's selected. Um, and up the top on the right, um, next to the sun, there's this blue tube. I'm not sure why it's a blue tube. Um, but anyways, if you click on it, it changes to this modify list. Um, and from the drop-down list, again, there's a whole heap of things I can do, such as I could add hair and fur. But that's a different battle altogether. I'm just going to drag all the way down to unwrap UVW. So already you can see that there's um, geometry lines have been placed. So what I can now do, um, I can make a selection either of the vertex, the edge, or the polygon. If I select polygon, and I'm just going to move my view around so I'm on top, oh, and another thing where it says select by, you notice that my thing is blue here, and it, if you hover over it, it says ignore back facing. This is pretty important that this is ticked because what I do now is if I left click and drag, I'll only select these views, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, and if I rotate it underneath, it's not selected. Um, if that button is not ticked, it will select everything and that will make everything quite a mess. Anyways, moving on, so if we click Open UV Editor, um, and again, there's quite a lot of work in here, um, I'm not going to show you how to use this 
Um, there's plenty of tutorials around which can show you how to do this, um, but I'll just show you the process for what we need to do. Um, so what we've got is we've got the eight um, polygons, and essentially what we're going to do is go to mapping and flatten mapping. Um, so this is sort of going to take all of these objects and then lay them flat, and then now this process is going to lay them so that they're sort of separated a little bit. So we want to have normalize and rotate and fill all ticked, and we press OK. Um, that should be 45 and 0 0.02 by default. So we'll press OK and we should see that this page will change to being um, sp spread out a little bit, which is good. So now what I can do is click on sort of each element just to check it's there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight polygons. So I think that looked all right. Just try that again. Just worried about this one being a duplicate somewhere. No, that looks all good. Okay, so although this doesn't look like much, we can actually um, see all of our lines. What I might do, I might just start that again because I don't have a very good view. Um, it's actually brought in sort of the, the gutter lines. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hopefully change this top view and just reselect all of these polygons and hopefully this will give me a cleaner look. So select them all, click on open UV editor, make sure that's ticked still. Um, okay, cool. It looks a little bit neater. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we've got these, as I said, these extra bits of line which we don't really need to worry about. So we've done half of the trick. Uh, the next thing is to um, save it as an appropriate type that we can open and edit it in um, Illustrator. So for this, if we go to Tools, and we're going to go to Render UVW Template. So there's a couple of things that we need to do in here, and I'll show you why. So if I just click Render UV Template right now, we'll see that we've got all of these lines. Um, and if we zoom in, they are actually there, they're kind of pixelated, but the shapes don't necessarily stand out that well. So what we can do is change the mode to be solid. And if I just render this again, hopefully your computer is faster than mine is. Um, we'll see that this has actually now come up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is really good. Um, and that red thing, well, I don't know. I don't really need to worry about that. Um, but I can see all my edges, which is really good. Um, so I'm pretty much there. So one of the tricks is to make sure that's um, solid. Um, I might just click invisible edges and we can just again see what sort of happens when we render this one. All right, so it's not as good, is it? We need to make sure that we can, that we do show the overlap um, and we can sort of change that color if we want. Um, maybe the black might be a little bit nicer. Um, and what we're looking for is just hopefully a clean picture with some white sort of shapes like this, which we can then take into um, Illustrator. So this looks pretty good. If I zoom in, I, I can see that I've got my objects there. I've got these extra lines. Um, sometimes you get them sort of through your job and sometimes you don't, um, but that's okay. Um, basically, if um, if we're fine in Illustrator to feel that click click and clear that up, that should be okay. So what we're going to do is save image, uh, change the format to be a bitmap, and I'm just going to call it roof out. Save that just as okay. And I'll locate my folder again, and I'm just going to right click on this and open with Illustrator. Alright, so in Illustrator, this will come in with everything sort of um, as an object. If I click it and just try and delete this black bit, um, my whole image disappears, which isn't good. So I need to go to Object and um, I'm going to go to Image Trace, Make and Expand. All right, so you can see already it's sort of been cleared up a bit. Um, again, if I just delete this black space, everything sort of disappears, so I'll press Control Z. Um, whilst I've got things visible, I'm just going to press Control A uh, to select everything. I'm going to change the stroke. Um, our laser cutter requires 0 0.01 um, to be um, red. So that, I'm going to change the fill color to be nothing. And I'm going to change the color of this to be something. And there's no colors. So if I come over to the right hand side where it says swatches, and so if I can sort of drag here or, or create a new one, new color group. 
Okay, great. Change this to RGB. Sometimes Illustrator can be a little bit annoying. Um, our laser cutter it needs 255, 0 and 0 uh, in order to cut um, a red line. If you were engraving it would be 255 in the blue and everything else 0. Anyway, I'll press OK. I've now got this color. It's coming in the wrong spot. So if I come down here, I can flip it over. Uh, and I might just make this white to be um, nothing, no fill. And again, I'll just press Control A and select all of my lines just to make sure it's all 0 0.01. Alright, so it looks like it's almost ready to go. Um, this shape looks like it's sort of not quite there. That line is in the wrong spot. Um, this doesn't have a filling. So if I press the Control Plus and Minus, I can zoom in and sort of see what I need to. Um, I can just get my line tool. Oops. And um, if I sort of snap over this, it'll snap to an anchor. I can then just left click and drag to another anchor. And this is um, a pretty clever way to um, just patch up our, our gaps. Um, just using the scroll wheel now to pan up. Anchor to anchor. Um, essentially what we want is we just want to make sure that we've got our, our geometry all set. So if I zoom out now, hopefully I've got my eight pieces still. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where am I missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it looks like it's up here. So I just need to zoom in again and just this last little bit. Um, and from here, I can just save it um, and send it to my laser cutter. So there's probably other ways of doing it. This is the way that I've found that works. Um, I know it's a little bit long-winded, um, but it does work. Um, I guess the trick is to just grab the measuring, uh, the ruler, and just to make sure that it is the right size. So if I grab my ruler, find the paint dropper measure tool, um, we're, just gonna, we're watching this W number. Click here. So it says 206 millimeters, that's about what, 21 centimeters, and that would make a lot of sense for my model. So when I laser cut that, uh, that should all work out fine. Thanks for watching.